Shalom. Call Halal Yahweh by Shemel Shai by Shemrakak Badash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors to the elder bishops, salutations to all my fellow laborers. Doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, um, among the heathen that look like the heathen, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson. And um, I uh, had to cast a lot. I had two subjects and um, it fell on the first one. So I'm going to uh, talk about an episode uh, of, uh, of The Walking Dead that I was watching. I was watching um, season 11 and I think it's episode number 13. And um, it just goes to show you, you know, how when the scripture says in the land of uprightness, um, see if I can find that real quick. Salakia. It's trying to beat the uh, the weather. Look like it's gonna rain. Um, Salakia. I'm just trying to find that scripture. Bear with me for a moment. And it's escaping me. I'm, I'm hunting. I'm searching. I'm searching. Yeah, it's Isaiah 26 and 10. Right when I was about to give up, <laughs> call Halal Yahweh by Shema was shy, and just try to quote it verbatim. But uh, yeah, it's Isaiah uh, 26 and 10, and um, and it reads, "Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of unrighteousness, he will deal unjustly." And will not behold the majesty of Yahweh, and and it and it's true, man. You know. <laughs> and on the way here, I saw a bunch of small hatters with their little van called a mitzvah van. I don't know what the hell they were doing. But getting back to the show, there was a place called uh, the Commonwealth, and the Commonwealth um, had a very strict. You know, they were basically. And if you understand, if you've ever watched the. The Walking Dead, you know, it's after the collapse of uh, society, the collapse of the world via uh, a virus that breaks out, which, you know, which animates dead people. And, you know, and the most dangerous part isn't even the dead people. That was the danger in the beginning. The most dangerous part are the people that are left alive fighting for resources. So that's what this, the, the, the show was really about. Um, you know, the different little camps of people that, that get together to try to survive and this group against that group and you know and um some groups were were more civil than others you know some groups were just ruthless some groups were cannibal you know some groups all they did was prey on other groups um and that whole sort of thing so this commonwealth was trying to you know uh, uh make life the way it was in the old world but guess who was in control the wicked and they're not going to learn. And so it's the same old thing, man. You know, because you, you got to think, man, if you're sleeping out in the elements, like if you had to sleep over under that tree that you're looking at, you know, and all of a sudden you find a place that has walls. You don't have to worry about, you know, things trying to eat you or kill you or other groups trying to take your your, your, your sleeping bag or your, your grocery cart, whatever little things you scrounged and found. You don't have to worry about that. And it is almost like, you know, it's almost like life like normal. But what is normal? Nothing is normal about Babylon. And so, and just as, as and one of the uh, leaders, one of the main characters, Maggie, when they came at her, to, uh, when, the, when they sent out the embassy to her group, she denied uh, their services. Said, I'm, my, you know, my people, we'd rather, you know, deal with it on our own and struggle on our own. And, um, and Maggie was being wise because it's best to stick to the devil you know. At least you know what he's, what he's up to. And it turns out she was right, man. Because what these people were doing, everything looked, you know, they had, a, they had a military. They wore armor so they couldn't be bit by the dead. And, you know, they had fully automatic weapons. And they had food and movie theaters and ice cream houses. And they had a, you know, they had a, a screening 
uh, uh, thing that you went through when you came to come to their to their society, but it was all a lie because all all they were doing they were bringing people and they were say, okay well you're gonna be military and it was militarized mil militarized police by the way or you're going to be a secretary they assigned you your position according to what you did in the world or according to the assessments that they gave you all right um, so you got assigned whatever duty that you were you know that you were doing and they gave you a place to stay all right but what they didn't know is that the same thing was going on this commonwealth was going around uh sent you know uh, uh going to other places offering them to join the commonwealth but if you refuse then they would stage a false flag event to make it look like you did something wrong to justify their soldiers coming in, killing you and taking what's ever left and taking what's ever left of your people and bringing them to the Commonwealth anyway. Does that sound familiar? Uh, so let's go to uh, Sirach, the 10th chapter and the 8th verse. And it reads, oh, it's wrong one, Salakia. Although I do know this one by heart, and for some reason, it doesn't want to show up. I don't know what's going on here. And it reads, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. All right? So now what's going on is that they went to this project where these people were holed up in this in this project building and it was mostly Jake you know even though the leader was uh was, was a was an Edomite but it was mostly Jake and he didn't trust them and it turns out he was right because the guy who was playing like he was such a wuss was actually the military leader and he ended up uh, disarming one of the guards and, and killing the leader and killing the guards that were nearby and took over the place uh, because they refused his, his help. All right. And because and the guy called him on his bullshit, you know, and there were people who were with him, you know, uh, that were formerly with this same woman, Maggie, that believed in this guy. They had no idea that that's what, what they were about to do. So he learned the other side. And when they didn't agree with it, he uh, he he began, to, you know, he began to attack to kill them too because they tried to stop him from doing what he was doing and um so now you know his cars were revealed and he was and basically the devil was the same old devil and all of us being led by another uh edomite who's uh uh back at the commonwealth and he wants to take over the commonwealth so he wants to get rid of the woman that's another thing in that show too they really got this woman over the man thing bad in the walking dead you know like when when everything falls, women are gonna raise up and and, and kick all the undead, or kick all the zombies' ass, kick all the men's ass, and take over the. World. It's just, uh, it's sickening. But nevertheless, you always will hear me say, never trust a a, a man with the bald face and a, and a and a necktie. The guy wearing a suit and tie and the guy with the bald face, they're the most dangerous individuals on the face of the earth, man. You know, and they and and through the pen, through the stroke of a pen, you know millions of people can die and that's you know and so nothing was any different because this guy this rogue or well, I wouldn't say this rogue uh, uh, military commander but this military commander was following his orders and and so I don't know you know the story you know I'm still watching it so the story will be revealed if the uh, if the woman that's actually in charge is in on this or this guy just trying to you know pull a coup and take over but never nevertheless he's expanding this is how he's expanding the commonwealth and getting power into himself and getting more and more followers inside of him. I mean, you know, and, 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 uh, to follow inside, to follow him, is what I meant to say. So I'm going to go to uh, uh, to the book of Maccabees. And uh, we'll close out with that the first chapter. Around the f uh, 40th verse or something like that. Because that's what it reminds me of, all right? Um, let me see. Not the 
40, but the 21st. Trying to get to the portion when he, when he went to speak peaceably to the people. And then, uh, and then he attacked them shortly thereafter. That's what I was trying to find. It's Baba Kashar. But nevertheless, you know, I just uh, quote it. But basically, there was a, a, a. It's really bugging me that I can't find it. Hold on. And actually, I was going to quote it, but the Spirit said, no, I want to read it. just in time <laughs> all right um, this is uh, it is first Maccabees it's the 29th I was looking I was looking too far um, first Maccabees and I'm gonna start about the 28th chapter all right a 28th verse and it says the land also was moved for the inhabitants thereof and all the house of Jacob was covered with confusion all right meaning you know we were we were uh, not keeping our laws anymore not circumcising our children you know a lot of our people were, were um, cleaving on to the to, to the ways of the Greeks or the Edomites um, and it says uh, and after two years fully expired the king sent the chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah who came into Jerusalem with the great multitude and spake peaceably or peaceable words unto them but was but it was all deceit for when they had given him credence he fell upon them he fell upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. So, yeah, that was the account that I was trying to find. So, he, you know, they get the trust of the people and then they turn on the people. And that is just the nature of, uh, uh, of Esau Edom, which is one of the reasons why he is to be destroyed. All right. Well, he's not going to, you know, so they they because, you know, you, you bring them to the holy place and they're going to try to gather together and then defile it again. Uh, you know, the scriptures clearly say affliction will not raise up a second time. So with that, you know, I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, Wa'abah, Babal, Kwam, Yashara, Shalom.